So here we have the Creality K1. We're going through the unboxing, setup, and first print process with the Creality K1, and really testing the limits of the K1, seeing whether the numbers that Creality advertise are actually realistic in the first place. So yeah, uh, let us get to the unboxing. Always have a scraper handy. It is multi-use, multi-purpose use for unboxings and getting off those pesky sticky prints. Let me just drop this guy down to the ground here. Comes with a little top cover with a bit of foam on it. The upper plate with all of its information, stickers and the instruction book. Two corner uh, paddings just to keep the printer in place so it doesn't rock around within the box too much. And then finally, Oh, it's quite heavy. Okay, cool. The Creality K1 itself. Then when we unveil the printer, voila, not bad. It's very compact, actually quite small and compact. Now the build plate for the Creality K1 is 220 by 220 by 250, which is the same as the other 3's uh, standard size. So it is a small to medium size factor printer. I wouldn't really call it small. I think you can still get quite a lot printed on it, but it is something that is a bit on the smaller side. But that is where the Creality K1 Plus comes in, which uh, increases that size to 300 by 300 by 300. So let us just quickly get this guy out from the plastic and remove it. There it is in all of its glory. Bunch of foam on the inside as well to keep stuff in place and also just to make sure that the hot end doesn't move around too much, maybe in shipping and maybe get damaged in the process. If we take a closer look at the Creality installation guide as well, it takes you through the entire install the product process and just the final touches to get the machine up and ready to run. Now the Creality K1 currently, from what I know, only has a profile on Creality Print, which is a Creality slicer which is available to download for free from the Creality websites as well. It works very similarly to Cura but there is just a few UI changes in it. To fully unbox the Creality K1, the first thing that we will need to do is take out this upper foam section here. So according to the booklet you just move the belt out of the way because there is a little seam right here uh, which separates the two little foams inside of it. If you move the belt all out of the way you should be able to just kind of pull out this top section. The top section basically just holds the power cable, uh, which is just a normal kittle plug. The next thing we can do is move the head a little bit forward and just remove the back little pod as well. The next step is just to open up the front door. Here we have the casing or box where the screen for the Creality is in. We will also check what else is in there, but that is what I assume one of the things at least is in this box. Then finally, we remove the bottom part, which is just kind of a foothold for that box to keep it still. If we take a closer look at what is inside of the box of the Creality, we can see, whoa, let me just get this guy out, there we go. Here we have the screen for the Creality, which we will be assembling in a short bit. It also comes with its own little filament spool. Four of these little foot extensions or replacements. Currently, it only has plastic, hard plastic nibs. These probably help a lot for um, just absorption and also grip to whichever surface you put it on. Here we have a little closer look at what's inside. Oh, look at that. I didn't even know. They actually give you a little roll of filaments as well. Take a little closer look at the box that was inside as well. It comes with a little, I'm guessing this is some sort of, maybe some nozzle cleaning kit or maybe an extruder cleaning kit for if something goes wrong there. It also comes with a set of Allen keys and screws, a 16 gigabyte USB dongle. It has a plastic scraper, a little wrench, a 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter. And last but not least, you probably guessed it, a little side cutter as well. Here's a bit of a closer look at the roll of filament that it also comes with. I can't really make out which uh, filament it is. All that I can really see is that it is a hyper, oh it's PLA, never mind, there we go. Hyper PLA white. Here is a closer look at the instruction manual that comes with it as well. From the start it just shows you the exact unboxing process that you need to take and a few other instructions about tightening some of the bolts and screws that still need to be tightened. 
and installation of the filament holder and the top section as well probably the screen too. There's the little menu that I was talking about, uh, just giving a lot of information about the printer. To start with, I think I will actually be installing these foots uh, or these little foot nubs just to give it the best chance of not sliding around or vibration absorption as well. Cool, there we go. Take the touchscreen out of the box and connect the touchscreen to the flat cable extended from the base. Okay, let's do that. Here's a little touchscreen. It's got a protective sticker just over the top of it as well. Then we connect the flat cable to it as well. There we go. Clicks in nicely and then we just have to hook it on to here. Yeah, there we go. Screen has been connected and finally the sticker removal. Next thing to do according to the Creality rule, oh, that's upside down, connect both the power and the filament spool. Filament spool has two little slots here and it has two little slots that it lines up with here as well. So all you have to do is just line them up and then twist. There we go. Next thing is the power cable which is over here. You take this end of the kettle plug and you plug it in to the printer over here line it up just apply a little bit of force just to make sure that thing is not slipping out i apologize for the little degraded quality in audio um, but i have to use my phone to record this because the camera is too large so you can see there are three of these little triangle stickers inside of the machine two in the front corners and one in the center back you can see down there is a small little gap Usually there's a silver screw in there. I just already took mine out, but you have to unscrew all three of the silver screws because these silver screws connect and hold the bed down onto the Creality uh, K1 space. You can see just in the shadow there. Let me just see if I can get it. As you can see down just beneath the little black extrusion part, there's a hole down in the base and there is two more underneath both the other sides. You need to unscrew those screws otherwise the ball plate will not be able to move up and down. Once you've done that you can continue forward. After the screws has been removed we can now take the ball plate and remove its little protective layer as well. You are required to use glue. I will go against that at first and print without any adhesive just to see how bad it is. Otherwise we will get some hairspray and then if hairspray doesn't work we will use glue. Nice and shiny. As you can see the bed is magnetic as well so you can take off the bolt plate. Now all that's left to do is to turn on the machine. Once the machine has powered on it will then prompt you to select your language preference. We will go with English. Oh, interesting. It has other languages, but it seems that a bunch of these languages aren't supported yet, but it is listed there, I guess for future implementation. We say next, we have already done that. And then welcome to Creality 3D Printing. Please keep the blue cube in the diagram clear of debris. So it is basically just asking that we have nothing else in the printer, which we do not have. As you can see, there is nothing else in the printer. So we can just continue forward from here. So then we click OK. Then it will ask you to set up your network. So that is to connect it to your Wi-Fi. Uh, we will be going to a 3D printing. Then it will ask you for your time zone settings. Uh, so then we hit next. Now, I am not gonna be using the Creality Cloud app for this, so I'm just gonna opt to skip for this section. Self-inspection, welcome to the self-check process. Please place the printing platform, which is already done. The self-check process is expected to take something. I, I think the UI is a little bit confused. And yeah, let's do the self-detection. So it'll just ask us to not touch anything and it's going to check whether all of the printing functionalities are okay. It'll go through all of the things listed here and then once it's done, we should be able to continue forward. What you can hear there is the printer just kind of ramping up and moving the head back and forth extremely quickly. You can't really see it. Those belts were moving a little while ago. You can hear it. 
After finishing the input shaping, which is what it was doing beforehand, it now checks to see if the auto leveling of the printer is working as well. All in all, this entire process seems to be taking 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes at the longest. Wow, is that loud. So I guess that is the full speed of the fan and yeah, it seems the blower fan is also going full speed. I will show you guys the blower fan in a minute as well because it is a little bit different than we're used to with the other Creality printers. Yeah, it's checking each and every corner now as well. And now it's doing a... 20 or 24 point it might be even be 25 i think it's five points in one line and then it's probably going to be five back as well so yeah 25 points of leveling but it's actually a good thing if it's very robust and takes its time like it does with this especially when you're speaking about a very high speed printer you don't want your level to be wrong it's all on the auto leveling functionality Auto leveling has been complete, so the printer head moves to the side again, where its home seems to be in the middle right hand side. You can see on the little screen as well, it does tell us that the self test has been completed. Once you click OK after the entire self test has been complete, the home menu of the Creality K1 is this little uh, graph display of the bed temperature and the hot end temperature. And as you can see, the hot end temperature has a maximum temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. The bed goes up to 100 degrees Celsius. This little button here also allows you to switch on and off the light. So switching off the light, switching on the light, there we go. If we go to one tap down, you can see all the settings here, which is really, really easily readable and nice display of moving the axes of the printer, set the nozzle temperature to extrude and retract. It will automatically prompt you to up the temperature before you can retract to extrude, which is a good thing. There's also the cooling. We can quickly show you again just how loud this printer is when the fans are running at max speed. So this is currently the volume that the printer gives out with just the fan of the power supply system at the bottom. We can then take these fan curves and ramp them up. It is relatively loud <laughs> if you compare it to my voice. Closing the case does help with that. So let me actually get the top part as well. The one thing that I didn't show yet is the top part that just goes over here. There we go. Clicks in just like that and the audio as you can see the volume is already a lot better compared to that. <laughs> so it is safe to say that if you are going to use this printer, um, having it in your bedroom printing overnight might not be the best idea. <laughs> if we go one tab down, we find where our slices will be. You can see they have three pre-made test prints on it already. Uh, they also have a history tab where you can see your previous prints. If we go down one more, you can set your screen brightness as well as have a screen off time. This screen will turn off after a few minutes of inactivity. The screen will blacken out and then you just have to tap on it again to bring it back up. You can run that device self-test once again if you want to and set up your time zone again. Here is a network setting as well where your Wi-Fi settings are present. The last thing that it has is a little Creality facts and manual. That is enough about the setup of the Creality K1. Let's get to printing. So let's start our first print on the Creality K1. First thing we're gonna do is just put on the filament. So what I'm gonna use is Cron Silky Rainbow A filament because it's what I had on hand. It should be fine for the PLA settings. I don't wanna necessarily put something on like PG because I'm scared that they might have been sliced for 200 degrees Celsius and that might cause issues. We'll first extrude a little bit just to get some of that filament going through the nozzle before we start our print, just to make sure that it has what it needs. So we hit on the extrude button, it'll start heating up the nozzle to temperature. It'll go to 240 degrees, which is the temperature that most filaments will melt at. Also literally only a few seconds, it has already reached 240 degrees Celsius. You can see that it is extruding as well. It will just push out a ton of filament until it has finally reached the color that we want. 
of that entire process. We then go to our files here. We go to our local file and let's see which one should we do. I think we should start off with the 600 test. Let's see what it does. So as I said before, we will be testing this out without any adhesive to the bed at first. So what we do is we hit the print, we hit the calibration so that it does do its leveling beforehand and go for it. And there it goes. Jeez. I did not expect it to go that quick. <laughs> Well, that was a relatively quick print now, wasn't it? I did not expect it to accelerate that quickly. At first I thought, oh, well, this is quite quick. And then it suddenly kind of ramped up. The layer adhesion is actually quite good. I did end up breaking this as I was testing it. But if you look, this is one layer thick and you need to apply quite a bit of force to really get it apart. I can't even do it now. There we go. <laughs> but it's it's quite really, really decent, especially at that high speed. It is also extremely fine. I don't know if you can see that. My face is gonna cause it to not focus. Like that is quite fine. That is really, really cool. But yeah, this is obviously not something really interesting to anybody that went into the trash can. Um, so we will be printing a Benchy as well. And then after the Benchy, we will do a, our own custom print because we wanna see what it's capable of, what we can do with our own custom settings. So yeah, let's get to it. The Creality K1 has honestly blown my expectations out of the water. From the initial unboxing process to the setup to the print quality and the speed of the printing. So far I have not found anything that I could really complain about except probably the noise. The noise is a little bit loud but speed has to come at some price and I think the noise is the easiest price to pay for the speed at which it prints. We will be testing other types of prints with the Creality K1 as well. We did print this only mask as well, which is about a 15 and a half hour print, um, and it looks really, really good. If you wanna see more, go to our TikTok or Instagram and you can see the process of the print there. I hope that this video was informative and enjoyable to many of you out there, and I hope that all the information that you really required has come across. Join us in the next video where we test to see, does the Creality K1 actually print at 600 millimeters per second? Thank you all for staying to the end of the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video as well. And then I'll see you in the next one.